NFL, but it hasn't exactly gone the way he planned. The team is currently four and five, and for the first time, sitting below 500 nine weeks into the regular season. So I think a lot of us are naturally wondering if Tom Brady wished he didn't change his mind and that he didn't return to football. So, Tom, do you have any regrets? Zero. No, definitely not. I mean, I think I returned for, um, you know, because I felt like I wanted to compete. And, um, you know, I spoke to the team about it, and they were excited to have me back. And, um, you know, I don't really regret those types of things. So I think when I commit to it, I, I mean it, and I do my best and try to give everything I can to uh, this this particular opportunity. So I think the frustrating part is we just haven't played to the way we're capable of playing. Well, the Tampa Bay offense certainly isn't up to Tom Brady's usual standards. The Bucks, 18 points per game this season are the fewest by a Tom Brady-led offense through nine games in his career. So can the Bucks get things turned around? ESPN NFL analyst Rob Ninkovich joined Canty and Carlin and answered that question. In their last 44 offensive drives, they've scored four four times. It's last in the NFL. You know that's a that's bad football. So I don't know how you correct that moving forward. They don't. They're running out of time. That's the biggest issue. You know we're halfway through the year. We're in week ten. They they're running out of time here. Their only saving grace is that their division is another paint watching event. It's it's horrible. Up next for Tampa Bay, the six and three Seattle Seahawks. Now it's time for tonight's top sound. Here's Steve Lennox. Number four. All right, Michelle, we start with the NBA. Keldon Johnson helping the Spurs end a five-game losing streak. Spurs at home in San Antonio, knocking off the Bucks and Johnson with the throwdown. The call courtesy of WOAI Radio. Right wing faking a three and driving inside. It is Bochamp to the left corner for three. Abaka getting out though good. Rebound Trey Jones. Long lead pass to Johnson. And Keldon will slam it down. And that is the exclamation point on this victory tonight for the San Antonio Spurs. 29 points for Keldon Johnson. And the Spurs lead it 108 to 90 with 140 remaining in the game. Number three. College hoops in Philly. Damian Dunn and Temple knocking off number 16 Villanova Owls. First win over the Wildcats since 2012. It's been a while. The call, Fox Sports, Philadelphia. Down the lane, Dunn hangs and gets a tough layup to go in traffic. Temple takes the lead, 62-61. Number two. Sticking with college hoops, Michelle, number two, Gonzaga, coming back in the second half and knocking off Michigan State in the Armed Forces Classic aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln in San Diego. Kevin Winter, Malcolm Huckabee, had the call here on ESPN Radio. To Julian Strother, they're trying to fight Timmy. Strother pump fake, shot for a three, front of the iron, no good. Timmy, right place, right time. Up and in, counting a foul! Drew Timmy with a chance to tie the ball game for Gonzaga. He has been a monster in the second half with 17 total. Number one. And college football Friday night, Jaden Thompson with a terrific return for Cincinnati. Dan Hoard the call from Learfield. This kick is going to be taken by Trey. No, it's Jaden Thompson. Trey Tucker wanted it. Thompson stepped in front of him to catch it. Jaden breaks tackles, and there he goes. It's a foot race for the kicker. He's at the 40, the 50, far sideline 40. A teammate running down the block. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Bearcats. Thank you, Steve. Let's go back to the NBA. The 9-4 and four Memphis Grizzlies hosting the 5-8 and eight Minnesota Timberwolves. They end up beating them 114-103. to 103. John Morant had 28 points, 9 rebounds, and 8 assists in the Grizzlies' victory. He caught up with ESPN after the game. John, how would you describe just the camaraderie and the energy of this team still at this early point of the season? Um, I feel like it's our identity now. You know, we all a tight-knit group. We all, you know, love each other, be around each other 24-7. We've been putting in the work together pretty much since all season, training camp. And, you know, we got a long season ahead. And, you know, we put the work in. Um, so it's just our bond, man. You know, these are my brothers. I feel like we are share something similar. And our mindset, you know, our heart and our chip on our shoulder. And, you know, that makes us a special group. The effort on the glass today was impressive. Can, what is it about the culture that you described that helps you wear down the other team with your rebounding? Uh, Steve-O, man, you know, he gets a lot of credit for it. And I, 
it's rubbing off on everybody else pretty much. Um, you know, we attack the glass. You know, we do have, like, certain areas where you can't crash. You got to get back. And then on the defensive boards, you know, we know we got – uh, we play against, you know, a, a tall front court, and, you know, rebound is going to be important tonight, so we had to do that. All right, since you're giving out shout-outs to different teammates, Desmond Bain, he started a little slow, but he warmed up as the game went on. What's his continued improvement meant to you on the court? It means a lot, you know. Another guy, you know, who can go get you 30, can go get you, you know, 10 assists. You know, he can do the little things. He can hit 10 threes in a game. Uh, kill you in the mid-range and also his finishing has has gotten way better um so you know he's a real complete player now and you know it's tough for other teams you know to try to just focus in on me with you know the teammates you know i got around me and you know him taking this you know big leap you know this year it's helping us a lot and you know our win category and our points per game and uh you know just credit to him and his work man i've been saying it again top two not two there's Bain all-star man all right so towards the end of the game there